As you see, I'm trying to hop on a game of Rise of the Inca in an online multiplayer match in Katana Universe. But, just like all the other times I've tried to do so, I don't think it's going to work. Which, in that case, I'm still going to play Rise of the Inca, I'm just going to play with computers instead. But I really would hope to get into an online match, so I'm going to give it a few minutes. If I don't get into an online match for Rise of the Inca, I'm just going to go single player. But we will wait to see if any opponents load in. We got one opponent, meaning there was two players found. Me and the other player. But unfortunately, getting that third player, all you need is three people for... Or four, but mainly if you, just, if you can just get three player for Rise of the Inca on multiplayer in Katana Universe, you'd be golden. And I've seen people post gameplay of Rise of the Inca. And the fact that I have been unsuccessful... Makes me think, well, come on. What am I doing? What could I be doing that I'm not doing already? I have all I have no filters set up. I have no guild filters, friend filters, karma filters. It's all wide open on the whole big Catan universe. But I guess people are mainly playing uh, Seafarers, Cities and Knights, and Basic Catan. <clears throat> not in any particular order. Mainly, probably Basic Catan the most on Catan universe. Then... Cities and Knights, and then Seafair is probably the third most popular on Katana Universe, and Rise of the Inca is probably way down there. It, it might actually, I would wager that Rise of the Inca is actually less popular than Rivals for Katan, the two player, um, not really card game, but t tile game, if you will. Because I could probably get into a match for Rivals Katan, but of course, I want to play on Rise of the Inca. And this also goes hand in hand with my community tab on YouTube, so I can let people know that I'll be playing right <coughs> Rise of the Inca on live stream on or on Twitch Live, so that we can set up something where I could play with Twitch viewers, so I could actually get into an online match and play with you guys in a custom match on Rise of the Inca, which would mean would be nice. And just because I'm oh, Day Shoes is actually online playing Katan Universe, but I don't think he has Rise of the Inca. Yeah, because if I'm on Rise of the Inca in that this lobby right now, and players, my friends have the red icon by it, that means they do not have it, I believe. In which case, I'll just have to stick probably with a player match, but let me give it another, let's see, we've been on the stream three minutes. Let me be on the stream for five minutes, you know, if, if we don't get anybody. Let me start that search again just to keep it going. But to give it another two minutes, I'll just hop into a single player game. And we'll roll with that. Oh, but I did get a... F okay, so I've gotten a few more Twitch followers. I have I Am Peace, follow me two days ago, as well as Tornado Dude 96 underscore live. And Tornado Dude 96 LOL is his name on YouTube, I believe. And he just passed me on subscribers, so congrats to you for doing that. Because I was ahead for a while. But I knew he was going to catch up eventually playing... Um, I think he plays Roblox, Minecraft, and Five Nights at Freddy's. And he does some sort of mod. Sort of, some sort of game with a mod. I'm not quite sure on it, because again... You know, I know... I know Catan, I know Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies, and I know Mario Kart. Or a few other Mario-based games, and that's all I really know. It's, there's a whole big wide world of video games, but I know about, you know, this much. But anyways, good guy, good YouTube channel, he's doing well. I hope he gets to a thousand before me, but I hope I'm right behind him and getting to a thousand subscribers there on YouTube. Okay, about 30 more seconds. I don't think we're going to get matched. If we do, that would be amazing, but we will... Either way, I'll be playing Rise of the Inca very shortly. So, yes, okay, good on that. Alright, five minutes in, let's go for it. Let me put Twitch, I'll keep Twitch right there. I'll come over here. And unfortunately, 
not Cities and Nights, let me get into Rise of the Inca. We've already done the tutorial. There's only one scenario thus far. And of course I want to play with four players. Let me get Siegfried, this rookie, out of here. Let me get even Marianne, the, the veteran. Let's get only Masters in this game if I can find them. So we got Lynn as a Master. Luis is a Master. And let's get um, our boy Nasir, who is also a Master. We get... Um, friendly we'll keep it all standard we won't have a turn timer because it's just me I can take my time this time um, and random map yeah rise the Inca guide your people through the eras and create the world empire of the Inca all right let's get started yep stream is looking good so far so we'll continue on with that So yeah, just a nice little Rise of the Inca stream. I will get back to Cities and Nights, of course. Hello! And I'll be right back, actually. Let me plug this charger in, we'll get right to it. Yeah. iPhones always need a charge. Also, do you like the in-game music for Rise of the Ink? It's kind of unique. Obviously different from Bass Gaton and Cities and Nights, which I think share the same uh, in-game music. Okay, so we know in Rise... Let me, let me tilt the board, actually. So actually it's kind of refreshing. There's no barbarians to worry about. There is still a robber. But of course I know in Rise of the Inca, as some of you may not know, the um, I can't remember what they call them, but it's fish and the two other things. They're not commodities, but they're not resources. Actually, let me figure out real quick. Um, let's go to Rise of the Inca. trying to think of what those are called. Inca goods. Inca goods. I just remembered that's what they're called. So the, you have the Inca goods, which are fish, and then the two other things. Um, but yeah, those come in handy with uh, trading, trading in for uh, different resources that you'll need. But of course, for to start out, for our first try, we need either... Um, I think it's four either four settlements or two cities in a settlement for the first tribe and the second tribe is identical so you're kind of basically going to four four victory points to settle your first tribe before you can start your second tribe so looking at the board brick is really weak um, so I might go for this five six nine and I'm actually gonna point my road I'm going to go this way, see if I can double build on the 6 brick, but also gain this 4 right here and the 5 of these Inca goods. And I also might want to get on some of that fish, so maybe the 8, 9, 10, if it's open, will be nice for me to get on to. But we'll see here. And of course the 8, 5, 10 gets claimed. And the 4, 5, 6 gets taken, so that's that's a dud. Of course, this is placing first. This is the um, issue you run into where a lot of the good spots will be taken. 
Oh, and actually they changed it on the icon up here. It used to be like dots. Or actually, maybe that's only on the app. Because now I think about it, I have not played Rise of the Inca on the, on the desktop browser. So if you see on your player icon, it'll actually show you how close you are to completing your tribe. So everybody, you start out halfway to complete your first tribe with your starting two initial settlements. So I have a 569. I may go for the 4910. That's going to bring me some ore, which I'm going to need. And then from there, I have a lot of expansion areas to build out to. And I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably hold off on the 8-9 for now. Because um, I don't have this other Inca good. So it's no use building on fish if I can't have all three Inca goods, you know what I mean? So go for this spot. And I will build Le Road towards the 4-9-11. And hopefully I can get on that spot to gain some sheep later on. So roll a six, and I'm immediately going to build a road. And obviously all the the roads look different, all the pieces are slightly different. I think they did that just to differentiate it because of course you can buy Rise of the Inca in the physical uh, expansion here. So I'm going to get fish for a wood. I'm actually going to take that straight up because I don't have fish. And now they want the fish back, so I'm not definitely not going to do that. So if a 9 gets rolled, I'm going to get the last Inca good I need. And that's going to allow me... If you have one of each Inca good, you can trade those three in for two resources of your choice. Which is a very, very nice deal. I'm going to rice crispy treats out in the frozen 21 degree weather car. Let's see if they froze or defrosted by now. Mmm, smells good. Okay, Nasiro build a wood. Okay, let me like check on the game log for you because I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So the Inca goods are fish, feather, and cocoa. And Nasir traded one of each of those for two of whatever you wanted. So we got a wool and a lumber. So this is the only Catan expansion where trading in different things get you something else on a good trade, not two of the same thing, like for example, through a wheat port. There goes a 7 right on queue. Let me show you the bottom of the area here too. So yeah, with the trading you can do three for one for anything instead of four for one like in you know basic Catan or cities and knights or you could do two of any Inca good two of the same for one card or one of each Inca good for two of anything you want sheep so I'm gonna take this trade because if I get one coca then I can get the brick and the lumber I need <laughs> so I basically need a 9. There's an 8. I don't think anybody has it, but... See, so yeah, let me just show you in the bank. It's all 3 for 1. And Inca goods are 2 for 1 automatically. Well, let me see if anybody wants Feather. Nope. So I'll just pass and wait for the 9. Another seven. But so now actually all I need is a six to build the settlement. what that is but now I don't need to wait for a coca because I can just go to the bank two feathers for a brick and the trades are favorable in this game compared to base Catan because there's no ports 
so that's why they have to be a little more favorable. So I just need one more settlement, or I think, I don't think I can do th uh, two settlements in a city. I think it has to be two cities in a settlement or four settlements. So it's just a better idea than right now to just build another settlement. But one one stipulation with that is, um, let's see here, can I get two? Actually, no, I'm just, you know what, I'm going to wait. If I can get a nine, then I'm, I don't need to take that trade, because I'll get one of each of the Inca goods. But another stipulation with building roads and settlements is you can't build out into the forest here. You can only build on the edge of the forest. So I cannot build on this 10-11 blank spot. I can only build on this 9-4-11, which I did, and the 9-4-10, which was my starting placement. Okay, so there's a 10, and I'll pass. Oh, two actually does give a brick to somebody, to, to Lynn. Six is shut down by the robber, but there is a six fish. Okay, so Lynn is also tied with me at three settlements so far. So yeah, basically looking for a nine. A nine is going to give me a coca, an ore, and a sheep. But a four gives me the lumber. Oh yeah, Longest Road in Rise of the Inca is only three length road. And it doesn't give you any victory points, it just gives you a trade advantage, I believe. Okay, there actually I didn't need a 9, I need 11, which also works. So I will go ahead and let me show you what I'm... This is the 3 for 2. Yeah, right, right, right. So the 3 for 2 bank trade is a separate bank icon. So you select one of each Inca good you hit the check mark and then I'm gonna take two brick because I already have two lumber and do that trade now I can build two roads and I actually think I'll be taking longest road if I do this yep so I have longest road instead of Nasir now and I believe okay so it's the when you own longest road you get a special uh, trade-in rate. It's kind of like you get a port, but... Um... Oh, and these can be different cards. So I can actually, instead of two of the same card, I can trade in two of any two, any combination of cards. It just has to be two cards. And I can get one card of my choice in return. But for right now, I don't want to do that. I just want to wait for some more dice rolls. But that is a very, very good feature about Rise of the Inca. There goes an 8, which I do not have. But with the longest road trade advantage, I guess you can call it, I am much closer to getting my last settlement out on the board. Okay, lumber. I'm going to ask for 2, because it's the computers. I don't get it, so I guess I should have just asked for 1. There goes a 3. So to get the settlement, I'm going to need a 6, which is shut down. Oh, and Nasir beat us all to it. Starts on the new tribe. So the the previous, the first tribe, once you finish it, you place a thicket over each uh, settlement that is on that first tribe or city. And then you get to place a, f a new settlement to start your second tribe, but you don't build a road off of it. You only, um, you only do that on the, the starting setup of the game. So what I roll a three that did nothing, so I'll just pass. I could have tried to trade land for the wood, but I'll just I'll just wait and see what happens here. Basically a nine and a three. Because I'll get the the sheep I need, and I can do um do the ore and the um like a feather with the longest road trade special trade in at the bank for the uh brick or the lumber that I need. But either way, I'll still need a couple more rolls after that. So Lynn is also on the second tribe. 
Again, I'm playing with masters, so what are you going to do? Okay, there goes an 11. It's too bad I don't have a fish, and Lynn got on that 9-8 spot that I wanted to get on with my second tribe. So I may have to go settle for the 9-10 spot just so I can grab fish. There goes an 8. I still really can't do much. Let me see if anybody is trading fish. Nope. Let's see if anybody wants coca. Nope. Does anybody want wheat? Absolutely not. So I will just hold what I got. I am close to seven cards, but you know my numbers aren't getting rolled, of course. And there goes a seven, but I only have five. So Lynn and Asir, being on their second tribes, their first tribes, even though they have thickets on top of their those settlements, they still produce resources. So it's not until your third tribe that your first tribe gets ripped off the board. Because eventually, if you had all three tribes on the board at the same time, the board would get way overcrowded. Oh, and there are development cards. So Combat Arts is basically like a knight card. And there's a few other cards that are very similar that parallel development cards from Base Catan. So that's something to keep in mind too. You can buy those um, down here. And I think they cost, yeah, they cost the same thing they would in Base Catan. A sheep, a wheat, and an ore. So I'm finally going to roll a 9. And I'm going to get a lot of things here. So what I'm going to do... Okay, so this, what I'm going to show you here is a little bit convoluted, but right now I have two, I have three coca. I could do two for one for the brick, but then I don't have anything else to trade in for the, the lumber. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bank, and before I do the two for one trade, I'm actually going to, do, well, I'm going to do the two for one trade. So I'll do two coca for a fish. And that's setting me up so now that I did that 2 for 1 trade, I can now do the 3 for 2 trade. So I will do all, one of each ink of good. I'll hit the check on that, or the green icon. Then I'll take basically a lumber and a brick, basically a road. But I also have a sheep and a wheat, so that's going to be my fourth settlement. My first tribe is completed. I move on to the second tribe. And keep in mind, all my first tribe settlements hang around on the board, so I still produce um, resources from those hexes. So the only thing I'm missing is a, is a fish hex. So it's the 9-10. I could build on here. And also with your second uh, tribe, your first, your first settlement placement with your second tribe, what you want to keep in mind is having room to expand. Because your first settlement, they all, or your first tribe, they all have thickets on those settlements or cities and they no longer count towards your second tribe so you have to make sure you have areas to expand so you can you need to build at least one more settlement or actually you need to build at least two more settlements so you can upgrade two of your three settlements the cities to move on to the third tribe so you need you need space to move is pretty much where I'm getting at so I could go for this 8 11 12 and then build later build out to this 3 11 but then I'm kind of stuck in here because where else am I going to build to, right? So I might go for the 9-10. And then, but I got to see if Luis, what they're, what Luis is planning here. Because there's not a whole lot of open room on this board. There's the 4-11 and build around to the 11 and then the 2. Um, I can't build on the 6 10, 9 because I'm going to get stuck waiting on Lynn to complete their second tribe. So that their first tribe gets ripped off the board and then I can expand out in this area. So that, I don't think that's the best idea. So I think, for now, I'm just going to go on the 9-10 spot. And I'm going to work, work my way around this way for now. So the 9 immediately pays off. I get all the stuff from my first tribe plus the fish. And I think initially I'm very close to a city. So I think I'm going to work on the city first. And then build out some roads for a settlement. A uh, wheat for a sheep, absolutely. And I should, ooh, <laughs> or for a fish. Don't mind if I do. So I was going to do the um, longest road. Um, but actually, I don't have a longest road anymore because once you complete your first tribe, you get thickets over your settlements or cities, and then all your roads disappear. So I no longer have the longest road trade advantage. That just went to Luis. And that was a six, so I did get a brick, so I will be building some roads shortly.
after my city, of course. And there goes a five. There's some wheat. Very, very nice. I do have eight cards, so I'm hoping I don't roll that number. We won't even say it. And thankfully we didn't. So I do have an 11, which is good. Okay, so here goes nothing. I'm going to build a city. That's what it looks like. It, it looks very similar to a settlement. I'll give you that. So you have to really look closely at it on the rise of the Inca board to tell that it is, in fact, a city. And I'm just going to do a straight two coca for one lumber. And here's our first road out on the board. And of course, the only place I can really build towards is that 10 3 spot. So that's what I'm going to go for. Luis plays a combat arts. And I'm not sure if there's like, I don't think there's a largest army card or largest army two victory points. Um, I think you just play development cards and, you know, there could be some sort of knight trade advantage that. But we'll find out, because Luis has played one knight, or one combat arts. Nasir has also played one combat arts, so we'll see what happens if they get to two or three of those. Okay, so sheep for a lumber, absolutely not. i got to build my roads and my settlement now. I'm just going to say no to that. Um, sheep for a fish. I. Th Let's also ask for a brick, just to see what happens. Um, yeah, no. Because now I can do one of each Inca good. I can do the three for two trade, get two brick. And then I can build a road and a settlement. Eleven, like it. So the good thing about um, this expansion is that by your first tribe still staying on the board, you still get all those resources. So it's kind of like I have four settlements on the board or actually five settlements on the board right now, just one of them is active and counting towards my my tribe, but it's actually a city. So every time a nine gets rolled, I'm getting two fish, not just one. So the six comes in hot at a perfect time, and actually, with my three for two trade, I'm gonna take a, a brick, but I'm also gonna take a ore, because I'm looking ahead, after I build that settlement, I'm gonna wanna build the city soon after. So I'm going to do the road, then I'll do the settlement, and then I'm going to hold what I got, because if I get one feather, then I can do three for two, get the two cards I need for the city. But then I just got the five wheat, so now I just need one card. Like, I remember I don't have the longest road trade advantage, so I can't do two of mix and match cards for one card that I want. And Luis goes for the 6, 9, 10 spot, so he will be getting a lot of wheat. And thankfully, he did not encroach on my area, so I can keep expanding out over here on this side of the board. And an ore for a fish, that is a no-brainer, so I can get a city. Lynn does take the trade. So even though they're masters, they are helping me out a lot. Okay, so Lynn just built the road towards my city. I don't know what that is all about, but a 9 is going to bring me all sorts of cards. Ultimate power. And I'm going to... I'm not going to accept the wheat. I don't want to give away... or I don't I don't want wheat for coca. I want to keep my coca. And I want to roll a 10 so I can get a feather. That way I can do another 3 for 2 trade. So yeah, I would say 3 for 2 trades are a huge part of Rise of the Inca. Basically trade-ins in general. You can trade with other players, but trading to the bank is very favorable in this game, in this expansion. So let me get the second city. Um, let me see if I'm missing something. Is there only... Maybe there's only one city? I thought you were supposed to be able to build two cities. Because I'm looking at... Let me look at other... Okay, one city for blue. I think everybody only has one city. Yeah. You can see orange has the same thing. But I'm pretty sure in the in the cultural goal... Oh, you know what it is? I'm reading it backwards. It's two settlements in one city. For the first and second tribes. So you only... Everybody only gets one city. To build per game of Rise of the Inca. So actually, I've already have my city, so I and, and I have a settlement, so I just have to build one more settlement. 
and then we're off to the races. So, with that in mind, since the ore is not useful to me right now, let me trade it in for a feather. And then now, let me do my special 3 for 2 trade and grab a road. And then after that, I just need to build another road and then one more settlement. Let me see. All right. That's all I, I'm actually going to buy a development card just to see what I get. Combat Arts, okay. Maybe I'll try to play some more Combat Arts cards, see if that gives you any... I think it does give you some sort of special trade advantage by having the largest army equivalent, if you will, whatever, whatever it's called, but we're going to find out. Alright, Lynn's going to roll a 10. So there's the feather we need. Now we just need... Oh, we also got a wheat. Now we just need a coca, either an 11 or a 9. But there's a 7. Alright, so we are the closest to completing our second tribe. Actually, I should have used the knight because my 9 was shut down, but it's a 3 instead. Uh, let me go ahead... What do I want? I want a brick. But I don't think many people have it. But either way, let me just see what's out there. Let me shut down. I'm going to shut down Nasir because he's. That 8 is pretty hot. Plus, he's halfway to completing a second tribe. I'm going to get a wheat instead. And I'm going to see if anybody's trading coca. I doubt it. Oh, we do have a counter offer. It's lumber. Okay, so they want the lumber. I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do it with Nasir. I'm going to do it with Luis. And then I'm going to do a 3 for 2 trade. What is this? Oh, so I do have Longest Road again. So I can do 3 for 2. Or three for or 2 for 1, I mean. So let me do the 3 for 2. Grab the road. I extend my longest road to four. And. So I can trade for a special rate. Let me do two wheat. I'll take an ore. And I'll buy another development card. Another combat art, so I'm going to play that on my next turn. We'll see if it just takes two knights to get to the... If there's a special thing you get with playing combat arts cards. Oh, and I do have a 12. I will grab a sheep. Oh, and also, you can see at the top your at the top of each player uh, circular icon there. I'm on. You see the second dot is lit up, so I'm on the second tribe. Yeah, as well as everyone else. And then below that, you see how far you are to completing that second tribe. So five, I'm going to... Oh! Here's another thing I just realized that I didn't mention. So, I was like, that five got rolled, but I didn't get any wheat off my five. It's because um, if you have a tribe with a thicket on it, which I, I just realized, I just remembered, if someone else has a new tribe, they can build a road and another road, and they can build a settlement over your tribe that has a thicket on it, which eliminates that settlement, and then they place their own settlement on top. So that's something to keep in mind. Settlements are not permanent in this game, um, if unless it's in your current tribe that you're working on. If it's a tribe that has a thicket on it, that's you've already completed that tribe, that settlement could be destroyed. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, so let me roll dice. There goes a five. And let me play this combat arts just to see what happens. Okay, mightiest combat arts. So I did get that. And I'm going to place it on... Okay, Nasir is on his third tribe, which is insane. So let me shut this down. And I'll grab a lumber. And okay. Mightiest combat. I'm trying to think of what that gives me. Cause 
because of the two for one bank trade is because I own the longest road. Let me see if I could search it. Oh, no. I can't see what I'm typing for some reason. Let me try this. Oh, I see what it is. Yep, there we go. Mightiest. There it is, Mightiest Combat Arts. If you are the first player to have two Combat Arts cards face up in front of you, which I do have, you receive the advantage mightiest advantage card mightiest combat arts if another player places more combat arts face up in front of him or her that player immediately takes the advantage card away from you if you're the owner of the advantage card one time during your turn you may move the robber to a jungle frame part provided that the robber occupies a hex adjacent to which you have a settlement or city so basically if one of your hexes is shut down by the robber but you have the mightiest combat arts advantage card you get to move the robber off one of your hexes once you have moved the robber, take the resource produced by the hex that robber had occupied before. Important, you may use the advantage of the Mightiest Combat Art card before you roll for production. So if I'm reading this correctly, let's say the robber was on my four lumber, and I moved it away, and I have to move it away to a jungle frame part. So kind of off of any number, one of the blank jungle hexes. I get to take the resource that was produced by the hex the robber had, was previously on. So if it was on my four lumber and I move it away, I get to take a lumber. Very good to know. So let me uh, pass dice here. And we'll see if I can use that on stream if someone shuts me down. Here goes a seven. Luis will put it on the eight, okay. And Nasir is actually very close to winning. He's already on his third tribe. But a nine comes in clutch. And wheat for a lumber. This is Lynn trading. Let me try to get two out of her. I will get it. A sheep for a fish. I'm going to say no to that. Yeah, I'm going to say no. Oh, road building. Okay, so Lynn is tied with longest road for me, but I still have it. If Lynn builds one more road, they get the um, bank bank rate longest road trade advantage, if you will. Or for a fish, can't do it. Can't do it, won't do it. I just need to get another settlement out on the board so I can move on to my third tribe. Two. Come on, bro, a two. Um, actually, I think I can do it, so check this out. I have the bank trade, the two for one. So I'm going to do two, a sheep and an ore. And I'm going to take a brick for that. And then because Inca, Inca goods are always two for one, I'm going to do two fish for the lumber. And thus I have the settlement I need to complete my second tribe. I could have built one more road and built on a 3-9, but um, I just want to complete that tribe and move on to the last one. So now, because all my roads go away, Longest Road automatically goes to Lynn, who still has four-length road. If Lynn didn't have a four-length road, or it would have gone to Luis, because Luis has a three-length road. If no one had a three-length road, no one would have got the longest trade advantage. So, since I still have the fish, I'm thinking about this 5-9-10 and then expanding from there. I could always go for the four, five, six, so I'll get some brick, and then build over to the five, nine, ten. Or I can jump on blue Luis's three, six, nine and steal that. I think for divert sake of number diversity, I'm gonna go for the um, four, five, six, and then build out to the five, nine, ten later. 
Here's a second combat arts card from Louise, but I still have the mightiest combat arts ad uh, advantage card. But if Louise, Louise does build, play one more combat arts card, then he's going to take that advantage card away from me. There goes a four, so I will get a feather. Okay, so it looks like Lynn is actually... Yep, so they take um, Blue's Thicketed First Tribe Settlement Placement and the 369. So I may actually swing over to this 569. That might be the a good spot to go for. Instead of the 5910. There goes the 5, so I get a Feather. I mean, a Coca, I already have a Feather. Now I just need a Fish. I can do a 3 for 2. And of course, on the third tribe... You can do three settlements instead of four, or you can do a settlement in a city instead of a settlement in, or a city in a settlement instead of a city in two settlements. So it might be better to go for the city in two settlements, but we'll see here. Nasir has a bunch of cards. Let's see what happens here. Ten. I do get some lumber. <clears throat> On the order, oh, Lynn's going to go for that 5-6-9 spot. I don't think I'm going to beat her to it. Dang it, I don't have that 11 anymore. Because my first tribe got deleted off the board. Okay, if Nasir builds a settlement there. Actually, he, Nasir cannot because Lynn is occupying his 3-6-9 spot. It's curious, though, that Nasir didn't just build a road up to the 8, 11, 12. Okay, so that was a 3, double number. Is Fish out there for trade? No, it is not. Is Coco wanted? Nope. So I think what I'm going to do is do a bank trade. Hmm. I almost want to go for a city first. I think I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, let me do that. And then I'll wait for a 9 to get rolled. That way I can definitely do a 3 for do trade. But it's a 7. Yeah, I think I want to get the city first. And I'll just build 2 roads in a settlement. And hopefully I get that done before Nasir and I can win the game. There go the five. Okay, so now I can trade two coca in for a, a fish and do the three for two trade that way. Okay, Lynn completes their tribe. Longest road goes to. Did it go to Nasir or did it go to Luis? If it went to Nasir, he might win on this turn. Oh, he's going to build there, isn't he? Yep. Now he is. Basically, if he builds a city, he wins. Or if he builds another settlement, he wins. Also, I have nine cards, but it's not flashing red. Wonder if that has anything to do with um, the Mightiest Combat Arts card, but I don't think it does. It didn't say anything about that. If you hold more than um, seven cards, you're... You can actually hold more cards if a robber gets rolled and not have to burn them. Okay, so with this setup here. Okay, let me let me uh let me double check something here. I think I'm gonna go to the bank, do two coca for a feather, and I can do the three for two trade twice. So it's actually gonna be at six for four, which is very good for us. Let me do let me go back into the bank. Three for two incoming. I'll take a ore and a wheat, and I'm actually going to go back and do another three for two. And I'm going to take a second ore, and I'm going to take a brick. So now I can get a city, and then instead of going over to this five nine ten because I can't anymore because uh, Lynn built the a new a third tribe settlement on the four nine ten, so this is one space away. So that is no longer available to be built on. So I'm actually going to go the opposite way, and I'm going to try to claim this. 569 before Nasir does and that'll be the, my, my victory if Nasir doesn't win the game before I do and 
Okay, so a 60 roll to get my brick. I'm very close. There goes an 8, which I do not have. So yeah, now you see this the upper right section of the board is now wide open because all those uh, settlements with thickets on them from previous tribes, from the first tribes, are gone now because everyone's on their, or mostly everyone's on their third tribe. So of course the first tribe goes away when you start your third tribe because when you start your third tribe, your second tribe now gets the thickets on them. Seven. And actually, I just thought of this this uh, unique strategy with the seven. So I could actually shut myself and someone else down, because I still have the mightiest combat arts advantage card, and I think in the same turn I might be able to chase away the robber and claim that resource. So what do I need here? Well, I could shut down the brick, but I already have four brick. I could shut down the lumber here. Um. I'm going to try it out just to see if it actually works. If not, it's very dumb. But I'm going to steal a coca from Lynn. Oh yeah, so it does work. I can still chase the robber away. It's going to put it there, and I gain the lumber, so that was good to know. I will build a second road. And now I am very close. So, absolutely close. And I will pass dice, and hopefully the seer will not win. Okay, there goes a 10. Thankfully, Nasir got no cards off that 10, so that's good for us. Let's see. Okay, I have 8 cards, but I'm not burning cards. I wonder... I don't know the exact rule on that yet, because I... I have the Mightiest Combat Arts Advantage card, but I don't think that... Um, gives me that ability. Uh, let me look in the rules here. Oh, so it's with combat arts cards. So for each combat arts card you have placed face up in front of you, your hand may contain one more resource and or good goods card. So I have played two. Um, combat arts cards, so I can hold up to nine cards in my hand without having to burn cards to the robber. But unfortunately, I have ten at this point, so I'll okay, use an eight instead. But that's where that that uh, rule comes into play. Very good to know. So I think I've won the game. Actually, check this out. I'm gonna bank trade. Remember, it's three for one instead of four for one. I'm gonna go for a fish and a feather because I already have a coca. And then I'm going to go back do the famous 3 for 2 trade. And I'm going to take a sheep and the wheat I need. And I'm going to build on the pre the old tribe, the thicketed 569 that Lynn built on. Build over it. I already have my city on the board. So I should have the win. So I completed my third tribe and there's the victory. Because the third tribe only needs a city and a settlement. Or, or three settlements. Whereas the first two tribes need a city in two settlements, or four settlements. So we have one, Rise of the Inca. Let me hide the overlay, show you the board there. So that has been Rise of the Inca. I hope you guys like it. And of, of course right now, it was just on playing against the computers, the AIs. Um, if you guys have been able to successfully play a game of Rise of the Inca, online in a multiplayer match on Katana Universe uh, let me know I'd love to hear about it how do, how does that go do do people seem experienced at it like really into it like I am with cities and Knights like is there a lot of deep strategies going on or is it kind of more like base Gatan turned up to 11 like there's a little bit more going on but not much I, I definitely like this expansion it's, it's pretty fun it's just different enough plus the music too, but but the gameplay is just different enough. Plus with all the good trade-ins, the 3 for 2 trade, the Mightiest Combat Arts card, Advantage card, Longest Road, instead of giving you victory points, giving you a different trade advantage, there's a lot of different trade advantages, which makes the gameplay unique and interesting, so I do, I do enjoy that.
But yeah, let me know what you guys think, thought, think, whatever, of this expansion. I think we're going to end it here with just one game. And I may play some more, but of course I'm going to hop back to Cities and Nights on the next stream that I do. Which is TBD, just whenever I decide to do one, whenever I get some free time. So thank you guys for watching. I will s stop it here and enjoy this one game of Rise of the Inca. Because I post the tutorial on my YouTube channel. But this is a full-on game. Of course, with the AIs, but it's something, right? So, enjoy, take care, enjoy the rest of your Saturday.